Uh, well, thank you for joining folks. I'm Dana Torgerson, uh, Director of Product Marketing for Security Business Unit here at Sumo Logic. And welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. This is a demonstration taking a deeper look at Sumo Logic Cloud Sim Enterprise. And this coordinates with the breakout session that some of you may have seen just 45 minutes ago, led by Eric von der Linden. So with that, I'll get started here to show exactly what we're gonna be focusing on. In our security intelligence solution set, we have the ability to be talking about audit compliance, but that demo is actually being handled by Dan Reardon. Please take a look at, uh, at his demonstration uh, options. There's a, a couple coming up still, uh, just in about uh, 30 minutes or so, 45 minutes. Also security analytics is being done at least a couple more times right now by Mia Wilhelm, so look for hers. Uh, I'll be handling the far right hand side here, walking you through our cloud SIM offering giving you SOC analytics and SOC automation capabilities, in addition to all the other SIM foundational capabilities that you would expect. And speaking of a complete cloud SIM solution, I want to be able to touch on and show off these six differentiators, too, of our offering. Uh, top, and, top of mind, first and foremost, upper left-hand corner here, is the fact that we're automatically generating these actionable insights. And we're not just actually prioritizing alerts for you. And we're also automating... Uh, the enrichment with user and device and network context that's great and critical for your investigations. Also, we've got a multi-tenant dynamic scalability that speaks to the cloud native nature of our platform, which is um, uh, probably why you bought Sumo Logic in the first place. Uh, upper right-hand corner, you know, this is a platform that is bringing folks together and helping consolidate your tools. And this isn't just a SIM that we built in a bubble for a couple of folks. This is a SIM solution, an entire platform that you're able to use and share and work with your other colleagues across SecOps, ITOps, and DevOps. Uh, you're about to see that this is how we've integrated our deep search capability with a highly tuned modern security interface as well. Cloud native collection and detection, you know we kill at this. This is what we are known for, a proven leader in being able to help detect these new threat surfaces across hybrid cloud adoption and also digital transformation efforts that maybe your organization is undergoing. And the last one, it's tough in a 10 minute demo to show you know, exactly all the rapid time to value you get. It's best experienced, of course, uh, over the course of days or, or weeks uh, using a POV or an evaluation with us. Uh, but I think you'll be able to get a glimpse of the intuitiveness of the platform and how easy it is for different users to be able to self-select, self-service, and, and adopt and get onto the platform rapidly. So with that, let me flip over. What I want to share with you is a day in the life of a security analyst with Sumo Logic and our cloud sim. So I will flip over to another tab here. This is Chrome browser, a live demo environment that I've got running here. And it looks like it's just refreshed here. So I can show off the fact that you are now looking at our security interface. This in particular is our heads up display or HUD page. And whether I'm looking at today's date, which is October 7th, 2020, uh, one day view of data or punch it out to three days or even seven days worth of data, you can see my screen is dynamically changing. The HUD page is changing. What we're doing is we're taking in and ingesting your structured and unstructured data, your raw data. We're automatically parsing it, mapping it, and normalizing that into records. In this case, it looks like we've brought in the data and now we've got 7 million records. We've also gone and whittled that down to 218,000 enriched alerts. We call those signals. And this is a place where most uh, SIM solutions, you know, legacy, traditional, even some so-called next-gen SIM solutions will stop. They'll leave you with these 218,000 alerts or notable events, uh, forcing you to manually triage and validate those and try to get through all that alert, fit, that alert noise on your own. Or maybe you've been able to uh, invest in tools, uh, maybe you're large enough, you've got a big enough budget uh, and, and staff power to uh, use playbooks and automation and, or, and orchestrate some of those actions. And that's great, but that's not everybody has that capability. And even folks that have gone that path still back off from going all in on animation. We've got a great report uh, on sumologic.com and our resources, which is our 2020 state of SecOps uh, uh, 
and automation report, SecOps and automation. And I encourage you to take a look at that report as well. What Sumo Logic is doing here is that we're going further. We've taken those 219,000 signals and we've now condensed that down. We've correlated those signals into 11 insights. And insights are what our term is for opinionated view of critical incidents that need immediate attention by your security analysts. Now your eyes are probably drawn to the center of the page and that's by design actually. This was a, a UI that was built by security analysts for security analysts like yourselves. This is our insight radar. As I go around the perimeter here, I'm able to see this blue line and you can see the ingestion of records as it ebbs and flows as they're being brought into the system. And then I also can see emanating radially these different bar charts sticking out and these blue or cyan colored charts uh, are actually uh, showing the signals and it, because I'm looking at a three-day view which starts top dead center 12 o'clock and goes clockwise around the horn This is one hour increments between each one of these bars But ultimately you're here worried about threats. You're here worried about security. So that That's the insights in the center red triangles represent insights that are new those that have not been looked at yet Nobody has taken ownership or is considering the progress that they're actually working on them yet. Then there's insights here that show up as green. Green indicates that it's been closed. It has been worked. It's been validated. Somebody has basically signed off on it and moved it into a closed uh, pro uh, process flow. And, uh, and that's great. You want to get as many greens as you can. I'm sure that's what your CISO or CSO is looking at too, or your SOC manager wants to know that your team is, is turning reds to greens. And then there's also yellow that'll show up. And that indicates insights that are currently being worked or are in progress. You might, not shown here, but you might also see white triangles showing up. And all that means is that it is a triangle, which is an insight that is in an other category, part of our customizable categories. So it's new, in progress, customizable, and then closed, which is green. So let's, in the spirit of a day in the life, let's go actually look at what it would be. 7 a.m., say a Monday morning, you come in here, click on the insights page. With the insights page, you're greeted with all the different insights for that time span that you were looking at. You can change that as well. I've got a column here for new, in progress, a customized column. Remember I mentioned white triangles would be the other. So that would be anything in here would show up as white. Tier three, anything that's in here would show up as white based on that time frame. And also closed. Closed looks empty right now. Let me turn off the filter because I'm actually suppressing that. Now we'll see it load up. There it is. I don't need to look at 1,398 closed insights. That's in the past. I'm looking at the, the current, which is let's look at these new insights that we need to worry about. Uh, or I could even take a look at in progress insights as well. Uh, so this one here, initial access and persistence, we could take a look at that. This is an insight. It's got a unique numbering sequence. So it's 1405. So that uh, makes it easier to track amongst your teammates. You're greeted with this graphical view of a timeline from left to right, and this is the date and time that the series of signals have played out. The signals which make up the insight, a one to many relationship here. Uh, one to a lot of many, actually, in, in most production cases. This particular example we've got here is looks like it's made up of four signals. Now the signals were fired by a rule and they're denoted by these little uh, shapes and icons. A blue diamond are rules that had triggered the signal. There's also the ability to have anomaly rules that trigger threat intelligence rules like a purple pentagon and also third party feed data that would be little yellow or orangish squares. Now I don't see any of those here, but I do see four signals that have fired, including two pretty much right on top of each other at maybe a very similar timestamp. I can review those further down here as signal, signal, signal. Looks like there's proof point. A user received an email with efficient link. Well, that's not good. I can drill down into that. I could look at the checkpoint. Apparently the firewall solution uh, using their threat emulation found a malicious file. Okay, so that was allowed. It passed through the firewall. Uh, CrowdStrike on the endpoint has a detection summary event. Also interesting, our threat intelligence, which is included with Sumo Logic, uh, got a match, a device IP matched threat intel file hash. And it's at that point that it looks like the system made the determination that this was deemed to be an insight. And so it treated it as such. Now, there's also additional information here. There's artifacts that you can dig into. These are areas and fields of data that didn't quite fit into the signal, but we didn't want to drop it. We kept it, and it's attached to the insight, so it's there if you need it for investigation. We also have enrichment data, too. 
automatically enriching the data that you would normally go and scrape yourself and search yourself using your existing uh, uh, tradecraft tools uh, and lookup tools. We've just shortened the time for you and, and built that in. So it's attached to the insight. Uh, user, device, network information. Uh, in this case, uh, user IP was looked up, uh, NS lookup for the IP address for the device, uh, endpoint information coming over from CrowdStrike information and intelligence. Great stuff. So when you're looking at this insight for this initial access and persistence, and apparently it looks like it's a phishing attack that played out and it looks like it might have been successful, you'll want to investigate and go deeper to consider, well, what happened in these signals? And the signals have a bunch of information here, both the description, the timing, uh, the MITRE attack stage framework uh, of what stage this particular signal was, and this is apparently an initial access stage. You can also drill down and see the rule that triggered it. Here I can see a lot of detailed information just with one click, drilling down into why this rule was triggered and what made, you know, how many times is this rule fired, uh, generating these signals, how the signal is created based on that rule when a record matches the expression, go do this with this name, this description, uh, with a dynamic versus static severity level using this field. Uh, you can see the history of who might be uh, editing or looking at this rule. And then you can see the different 122 signals that have been fired thanks to this rule. Let me pull back though. We were looking at this signal, this proof point signal. There's another layer of looking deeper. You always retain the Sumo Logic search interface. That doesn't go away. You can pop over there any way you, uh, anytime you want, but I wanna show some native record search capability without even leaving the security interface. By clicking these little six dots, and as I hover, you can see them appearing in different areas of the product. Those are context actions. So if this apparently the source is coming from and hit this, uh, this apparently is victim's IP address of an entity. And we track entities across all of our insights for consistency and that's how we tie the data together. I could click that, do a left click on that context action. Then I can simply search all my records across all my, uh, normalized records that I have brought in and are, are using for real-time detection and correlation and pivot just on that one IP address for a one day, 24 hour period. And it looks like I've got 3000 records associated with that IP address. I can see uh, visually here that there's a spike of records at this particular time frame. but more important off to the right, I can see the top records by type. Most of the records here are all authentication, but one, is relevant to an endpoint type and one was relevant to an email. So that's interesting and as an analyst, I can use that to my advantage when I'm doing my investigation. So let me pull back again and stay right here in this signal. As I realize that I've looked at this signal, I've looked at the other signals and I deemed that this is truly a threat. Now as an insight, I wanna take action as a security analyst. And so I could have automated these steps and, uh, and the actions to be taken and triggered them automatically when the insight was generated. Okay, some people might not want to do that because, you know, the rise of the machines they don't they don't they don't know who's gonna uh, or what the impact could be by fully automating some of those actions. So we also have these on-demand actions that I, as a security analyst, can take. I could be sending off notification through AWS, uh, sending off to a, a SOAR tool that maybe we've already invested it in, a Slack integration, ServiceNow integration, uh, recorded future, sending off to Microsoft Teams, or just simply emailing a whole bunch of different folks that are on my team uh, that we need to get on this, probably my response team, the mediation team, uh, to pull that machine off, get them off the network, uh, and uh, start to remediate the account, uh, and maybe even flatten their, their laptop. When I know that I'm ready and done, and this is, you know, I've already been assigned it. You know, maybe my name is Steven. I'm, it's not, it's Dana, but I could, I could take ownership by one click. Uh, or I could make sure that anybody else on the team I could assign this to. I have timestamp. I've got the dwell time of how long this incident has been running. I can write tags in here, which makes it easier for us to search later, make a comment. And when it's done, we're going to clean it up and say closed. We close the insight. We have to choose a resolution or if it was a false positive, or maybe no action was required, or it might've been redundant. It might've been a duplicate uh, insight. Select that, hit close, and then the insight gets closed. And what that does is it'll move that insight from in progress where it was over to the close tab, which it has done, but I am still suppressing my closed, so that's why that's turned off. 
I realize this is a quick run through folks uh, at a rapid pace to show you all the power of what a day in the life looks like as a security analyst, digging into these security events, these, these insights that we raise to you in the form of this heads up display as little red triangles, or for your entire SOC team in this Kanban board view or list table view of insights. Well, that's it. With that, I'm Dana Torgerson. We've got another demo session coming up uh, right now, so I'm going to flip over to that. And please check out all the rest of the sessions and meet the experts and breakouts that we have going on for you right now for Illuminate 2020. Thank you very much.